show, Flash Drive Fam. I'm AJ. And wherever it is you get your pods, subscribe, share, and leave us a good rating. Welcome to another episode of Five Stripe Weekly. And Atlanta United have made several moves, and we will get to those. But they've also played a couple friendlies that were not really possible to be watched. So uh, we will go through them, uh, and we will see what happened. But uh, yeah, it was. Uh, it's basically it's fitness either way. Uh, but they've been in Mexico. Mexico City. Uh, they've played a couple teams, Alante FC, and we'll get to that first. So uh, that first match uh, was kind of several uh, kind of quarters put into one, but uh, the first one here uh, in terms of the first quarter, it was a total of f- uh, four 30-minute quarters. And uh, yeah, played at the Estadio Ciudad de, Depor- de los Deportes uh, in Mexico City. And the first match uh, resulted in a 1 1 draw. And then in, in the second one, LA United fell 3 0. But uh, that starting 11 consisted of Brad Guzan as the keeper, of course, and captain. Gutman, Purata, Robinson, Lennon across the back four. Uh, Franco Ibarra, Mateus Hosetu, Tiago Almada, Caleb Wiley, Machop Chol, and Luis Araujo rounded out uh, that 11. And uh, reports seem to be that Machop Chol was started up top and saw uh, time at the striker position. Caleb Wiley at left wing as well at times. And uh, Luis Araujo, of course, from the right. But uh, yeah, first quarter, unfortunately, Alante, they did score early. And uh, yeah, in terms of, uh, you know, the uh, th- there was actually some fans in attendance. Uh, they sold some uh, tickets to the match, Atlante, And um, there, you know, was a, a little bit of uh, an audience for this. But uh, yeah, in terms of that uh, first goal, it was uh, yeah from Atlante and Brad Guzan. Uh, he went to block a long shot, but the rebound uh, fell to an Atlante FC player, and they were able to tap it in. But uh, yeah, um, in terms of Atlanta United, Franco Ibarra, he, uh, there was a good chance... Uh, in the first period, and it fell to uh, Caleb Wiley, who, uh, yeah, it was uh, too wide, and uh, and also, yeah, Wiley, he found Gutman with a diagonal ball at the near post, and it was just a little too long, uh, but uh, there were a couple more chances, Machop Chol found Luis Araujo uh, going and streaking inside the box, uh, but the uh, Brazilian shot, it was a bit off of the mark, but uh, yeah, there uh, was a free kick late in the first period earned outside the box, and Araujo, he sent in a ball, and it looked to get on the foot of Purata, but uh, that uh, chance went high. But uh, yeah, in that second quarter, Mateo Susetu, uh, unlikely scorer for sure, uh, he uh, got on the uh, scoreboard. So uh, LA United, uh, they in the 32nd minute uh, or second minutes, uh, he ripped a shot from a little bit of distance into the low corner to draw, draw it 1-1. And, uh, yeah, that's how that first match ended. But uh, into the third quarter where, uh, it sounds odd, of course, but, uh, yeah, Clement Jupp and uh, Aiden McFadden, Noah Cobb, Kofi Tuamasi, Ronald Hernandez, Santiago Sosa, Nick Firmino, Alan Carlton, Tyler Young, Jackson Conway, and Luke Brennan were the new starting 11 wholesale changes. And uh, unfortunately, yeah, this one uh, got a little out of hand. Uh, Atlante, they scored in the 67th minute. And then right before the end of the period, they were awarded a penalty kick. And yeah, 
2 0 to them. And in the fourth quarter, uh, more substitutions. And yeah, unfortunately, in the 119th minute, that a uh, another goal from long distance was scored to end the second match 3 0 uh, in favor of Atlanta FC. So uh, unfortunate there, but uh, yeah, I mean. It's uh, it's the preseason, so you know putting too much stock into it, probably not uh, too wise. But it is, uh, yeah. I mean, also the second team as well in that second, uh, you know, second match, third and fourth quarters. But uh, onto the second match uh, of the uh, preseason in Mexico City, uh, it was at Estadio Azteca. So definitely a. Uh, Beautiful venue, uh, playing against Cruz Azul, and this one ended 3-3. But uh, yeah, the uh, that 10-day trip to Mexico ends here in this uh, preseason friendly against them. And uh, played in the morning, closed, no video except for uh, you know the highlights that LA United put out. But yeah. Uh, in terms of the starting 11, Bracuzan, Gutman, Purata, Robinson, Lennon again in the back four. Franco Ibarra, Wiley, Tiago Almada, Mateo Sosetu, Luis Adarujo, and Machop Chol again. So Machop Chol, uh, yeah, seem, seemingly played uh, striker again. Maybe Adarujo. Who knows? We don't have video, so not sure. But uh, in terms of the report, uh, first half. Tiago Amada, he's back in the starting 11. And um, yeah, in terms of the first five to 10 minutes, uh, LA United uh, creates a lot of chances, apparently. And uh, in one, uh, Caleb Wiley, he carried the ball downfield and sent it wide to Brooks Lennon. And uh, Lennon made a good cross, which found the head of Machop Chol. Uh, and that header did unfortunately go high. But uh, Chol nearly got an, uh, another chance, uh, and it was a uh, when he forced a takeaway uh, deep in the defensive third for Cruz Azul and uh, had some space, took a shot, but it was saved and uh, ended up uh, going out for a corner. But uh, around 20 minutes in, that's when Atlanta United got on the scoreboard. Luis Adarujo found Almada, and he was central at the top of the box. And yeah, Almada, he knew what to do with it. Slick spin, apparently, created some space, and he uh, drove a low shot uh, against the uh, the against Cruz Azul, and we were ahead one nil. But uh, late in the first 45, Cruz Azul, they uh, equalized, and yeah, the one it was 1-1 before the halftime break. But uh, yeah, on to that second half, Cruz Azul, they went ahead, but uh, yeah, we found some answers, uh, you know, in that uh, second half as well, but uh, yeah. Few starters stayed on, but uh, yeah, a few were subbed off. But uh, Noah Cobb uh, came on for Miles Robinson. Ronald Hernandez came on for Lennon. Nick Firmino replaced Matias Asetu, and Jackson Conway uh, replaced Machop Chol. But uh, yeah, so in terms of uh, that uh, that second half, Cruz Azul they scored first, uh, but. And then United, they, uh, we got two goals from Adarujo, who's, uh, uh, you know, probably seeing some good confidence now. Uh, see the ball hit the back of the nets, and uh, he gets a brace in this second half. Uh, yeah, so the first goal, Adarujo, he connected with Nick Firmino, the Brazilian connection. And, uh, yeah, there was a nice one-touch pass from Almada to knock in uh, the ball uh, for the goal as well, so uh, great to see, but a uh, little combination play, but uh, and then the second goal, uh, Adarujo he used his pace to uh, take the uh, the ball away deep in the defensive third against uh, Cruz Azul, and he uh, 
he lifted a shot with his left foot to bring Atlanta United ahead 3-2 in the 56th minute. But uh, more substitutions and uh, Brennan Young, uh, Alan Carlton uh, entered the match and um, yeah, later as well, McFadden, Tuomasi, Mejia, Westberg, and Zubatu all enter the match. And uh, unfortunately, Cruz Azul, they did equalize. And uh, yeah, but, you know, I think it is encouraging to see that, uh, yeah, you know, even though uh, we did uh, eventually draw this match, that, uh, yeah, you know, we were ahead before all the substitutions took place, which uh, that's the the crux of it here is that it is a preseason match so maybe you know we shouldn't take too much into account but uh so you know the fact that we were ahead when we did have a good number of our starters in is a good thing but uh yeah so up next LA United uh they will face another Liga MX East team it will be Toluca FC at Mercedes-Benz Stadium next week on February 15th but uh, of course, as well, at the Benz, uh, there will be the uh, not only the AmFam Insurance Cup, but also the new primary kit will be finally unveiled. So, yeah, definitely, uh, you know, that match will have some good things to be looking forward to and be excited for. But uh, yeah, you know, the primary kit that we've all kind of seen a little bit, we will all be able to uh, at least get that final, uh, you know, final reveal that uh, we all have kind of known about a little bit. But uh, anyway, uh, on to some of the, uh, the shenanigans and team bonding that the team has been doing at the hotel and, uh, you know, in the big massive conference rooms. But uh, yeah, lots of uh, kind of team building exercises, but also a really epic game of rock, paper, scissors between uh, Juanjo Porata and Amar Sadic. And yeah, oh man, it's like, you know, both sides, uh, tons of players, another side, tons of players. And it seemed like it was, uh, you know, one side pitted against the other and Tiago Amato was uh, interestingly filming this uh, while on a chair. And Purata, yeah, in all the, um, you know, all the hype as well, he he wins the uh, that uh, that matchup against Amar Sadic, and he uh, for his troubles, Braguzan puts him in a Lex Luger uh, torture rack, uh, a wrestling move, uh, which is. Basically, he got draped across uh, Brad Guzan's very broad shoulders, uh, even though Parata is no slouch himself, a unit as well, but uh, basically uh, was uh, yeah pull, pulled up and down uh, on Brad Guzan's shoulders. Definitely crazy sights, crazy scenes, but uh, awesome to see and uh, definitely yeah got me hyped looking at it too. But uh, yeah. Uh, next bit uh, is that Gonzalo Pineda, he mentioned that uh, they had brought in a mentality coach uh, named Ben Freakley to assist the club with maintaining the right mindset, which I feel like this is very, very good. I mean, this is uh, absolutely something that has been needed, especially with uh, a little bit of uh, leaky back lines in the at the end of matches or, um, you know, early in the matches, conceding early and, you know, all that. So, uh, yeah, Freakley, he previously had worked with the Toronto Blue Jays in the past and, um, yeah, you know, in Mexico as well. So, really interesting. Um, yeah, and uh, went with the team in Mexico. But, um, yeah, definitely something that uh, I think is a very good sign that, you uh, yeah, we're trying to figure out some uh, some ways to not let the uh, the horrors of yesteryear kind of continue to happen. But on to the new transfers in. So it is official. Luis Abram has been signed. 
Uh, it was last Thursday. He's been signed from Granada CF uh, through the 2026 season. He will uh, occupy international roster spots. And yeah, I mean, he's a, he's a center back, left footed. And yeah, he's uh, 26 years old. And uh, yeah, probably will compete for places in the back line. Him being that left footer, uh, it might uh, be one of those things where if we play in a back three, uh, of course he'll play on the left side. If he, you know, if we only play with uh, a two-man center back pairing, then he probably will compete for places with uh, Miles Robinson and Peraza, and I think that's really good. I mean, that's something that uh, will provide competitions for places, which will always bring better. Um, levels out of everybody but uh yeah uh he's made 257 career club appearances across stints in peru argentina spain and mexico and he's uh scored a total of 11 goals and seven assists he also played with uh tiago amada at belez sarsfield so the the pair know each other for short as well so that's good a uh, little bit of uh yeah, some uh, you know familiarity between the two players, so that will help uh, in a lot of respects uh, regarding acclimating into the side. But uh, yeah, in terms of uh, yeah what he uh, kind of will bring, uh, yeah, brings a good left foot and uh, is a player that uh, is not afraid of. Uh, uh, last minute tackle, but uh, yeah, in terms of uh, you know this uh, this player definitely uh, in terms of at Granada seemed like he was surplus to requirements. So uh, you know I think he uh, at uh, at this level, uh, yeah, I mean brings a, a guy you know uh, he brings a lot of uh, you know experience not only on club level but international level as well. Uh, he plays. Uh, he has played for Peru 33 times at the international level, uh, including 11 matches in, uh, you know, the World Cup qualification. So he definitely uh, he's a guy that uh, comes in apparently for a really small fee as well. So uh, yeah, I think he was uh, less than 350 thousand or something like that. So uh, <laughs> a player that just yeah, I mean has uh, oodles of experience and uh, I think can contribute now, which is, I think, something very, very uh, much needed at this moment. But on to the DP uh, signing that we uh, just made. So uh, it's now official. The saga is over. Yes, Greek striker Yorgos Yakumakis is finally an Atlanta United player. And he has been signed through the 2026 season. Yakumakis, he joins from Celtic FC uh, of the Scottish Premiership. And uh, yeah, he will also occupy an international roster spot. But uh, Yakumakis at uh, Celtic, he had 26 goals and two assists in 2,517 minutes. And... Yeah, had seven goals and one assist this season in all competitions for Celtic. Uh, he's 28 years old, played the last two seasons with Celtic, and yeah, win, uh, brings a winning pedigree with him. Uh, he was the league's top goal scorer with 13 during the 2021-22 season, and uh, yeah, helped Celtic win both the league title and Scottish League Cup, so... Definitely, uh, yeah, winning the double is something that's great, you know, in terms of that type of winning experience brought over here. So, uh, yeah, uh, like I said, he scored six goals uh, in 19 appearances. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I mean, he's a player uh, that's uh, kind of helped them uh, uh, that. <laughs> kind of be in the place they are right now which they're nine points clear top the standing so uh very interesting that uh yeah we have made this move for around 4.3 million uh, uh million pounds and 
uh, it seems like also, uh, or Euros rather, but uh, it seems very interesting that, uh, yeah, you know, uh, it took so long. Uh, I mean, obviously, uh, he was uh, kind of headed to Urara uh, Red Diamonds in Japan, but then there was a last minute hijack from Atlanta United, and uh, it seemed like. Uh, now, at probably the last week, I mean, he was uh, pretty much with Mexico or with us in Mexico. But the uh, the crux of it was we didn't have enough of uh, that roster, uh, that salary structure space to actually you know have him in the squad. So uh, we had to free up, uh, and I think uh, you know. We'll uh, we'll talk about that and why, but uh, and who was freed up, but uh, seems like probably Mascara, uh, which I will uh, talk about later. But um, in terms of the uh, in terms of his career uh, kind of trajectory, uh, yeah, the Greece native, he uh, began his career at uh, P O Alt or at Salinu, and uh, before uh, transferring to Platanias in 2012, a uh, couple loan stints, and uh, yeah, he uh, made his way uh, to AK Athens, and uh, so yeah, he's, uh, he's made his way around uh, a lot of competitions, including, uh, yeah, playing in Europa League and in Champions League, so definitely a player with Champions League, League experience and having scored there, uh, especially even this season, uh, one goal, but still, um, yeah, is uh, something that's, uh, I think, you know, a really good uh, kind of level to uh, to bring over here. And uh, yeah, in terms of uh, uh, his next move after that, he moved to Dutch era Divise side VVV Venlo, um, and then finally moving to Celtic uh, in August of 2021. So, uh, yeah, he's also represented Greece at both the U21 and senior level, made 11 appearances, scored two goals for his country. And, uh, yeah, he made his international debut on November 11th, 2020 against Cyprus. But in terms of the type of player he is, he's a good finisher, uh, good at headers. Uh, maybe, yeah, passing isn't his strongest suit. Uh, and, yeah, definitely known to get a yellow card for sure. I would say, yeah, kind of a cross between... Uh, Kind of a cross between Joseph Martinez and Dom Dwyer a bit here. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that style of play uh, likes to do layoffs. Uh, yeah, kind of that target forward, you know, uh, brings others into the game. Uh, yeah, can play those short passes and, yeah, uh, likes to uh, kind of uh, press from that front as well and is known to uh, not be shy in the tackle. But... Uh, Boca, yeah, Carlos Boca Negra, he mentioned that uh, he's a powerful striker who loves to get in the box and score goals, plays with a high intensity, works hard, and is someone that we think will help the team in both the attack and leading the line defensively. So, yeah, uh, definitely very, very interesting uh, striker to have brought, be brought in, That more of that target forward that, uh, yeah, most likely a lot of those crosses from Brooks Lennon will be aimed at towards his head. But uh, yes, definitely, uh, yeah, 6'1", a unit, a, uh, a guy who's built very strong as well. But uh, LA United, they did a little questionnaire, uh, asked him 17 questions, and uh, some of the notable things that he talked about uh, or was asked was that... Uh, yeah, he actually has watched a lot of MLS the last two or three years. And uh, yeah, he watched a lot of Atlanta and uh, yeah, knows that we're a, uh, a nice club. We're a big club with a lot of fans, which is something that he really likes. And uh, yeah, apparently because yeah, he's a passionate person and he is looking forward to playing in front of uh, us crazy fans, quote unquote. And, uh, yeah, in terms of uh, 
you know, the uh, why as well. He researched the training facilities and stadium, and he is amazed. So, yeah, he's got that extra motivation to uh, to join us. So, uh, and, yeah, he's going to be joined by his wife and his two kids. And, uh, yeah, he made a point that uh, his life changed when he became a dad from one moment to the next. It's like his life had a point finally and it's something that is priceless um and uh yeah he mentioned that uh you know in terms of his favorite meals uh he has some specific recipes but uh in general the uh, the base is spaghetti my guy my guy i uh, i also am a massive fan of spaghetti uh but uh also uh, his nicknames, he says, I love to be called Yako, uh, and that's from his uh, Yakumaki's uh, surname, and also that, uh, quote, Tank is one of the uh, better ones that he really loves as well, and uh, he says that's attributed to his size and his strength, but um, yeah, uh, in terms of uh, him uh, talking about the kind of music before the game. Uh, he says, as long as the DJ of the team is good, I don't have any issues. And I don't think he'll have any issues because our boy DJ U is manning the ones and twos. So, uh, you know, and he says, if he's not, then I have to wear my headphones and listen to my music. Uh, I can listen to everything, but I love some house music uh, before the games. And that works me up to give me motivation. He, of course, also was talking about uh, the DJ of the team being probably some of the players as well. But, you know, shout out to DJ U anyway. But uh, and so uh, in terms of uh, some of the uh, things that he really enjoys as well, he uh, loves Netflix. He loves music. And uh, a few of his favorite Netflix shows are Breaking Bad and Peaky Blinders. He's got some good taste. Got some good taste. But... Um, he also uh, is a fan of NBA because of Giannis Atento Kumpo, uh, and he uh, he also is looking forward to getting to know the NFL better. And uh, now he has a better chance uh, with uh, LA, the Atlanta Falcons also being in the same house. So, um, yeah, in terms of uh, he said uh, about his playing style he says I'm a proper nine I try to get in the box I can score and that's something that I've worked a lot on in the past uh, two or three years and then he says my best abilities are my strength my movement my ability to score and I think that's uh, that I'm also mentally strong so uh, yeah definitely uh, definitely very very uh, much needed I would say if uh, he's a good goal scorer we absolutely need goals so this is music to my ears uh if he believes in himself which apparently he's got that in abundance uh that's very much a good thing so uh yeah and so he's uh very much looking forward to playing in front of uh the Atlanta United supporters and getting to know them and uh he says uh yeah he, I, I know that they're going to expect many things from me I'm really comfortable with that as long as I stay healthy, I will deliver, and we can celebrate many goals together. So, ooh, okay. Uh, you know, strong mentality and uh, a goal score. I'll take it. Uh, hopefully, he can bring us back to our glory and our former glory, our current glory, the glory that we want. But uh, anyway, uh, moving on from that uh, Edwin Mascara, of course, uh, that, uh, that move, he is now, uh, has been moved on loan to Defensa y Justicia, uh, of the Argentine division, and, uh, that's for the 2023 season, uh, he, of course, just joined us last season, mid-season, but, uh, yeah, he will now join Defensa y Justicia, and, uh, yeah, basically, it looks like it's to free up some some space on the roster in terms of uh, not only monetarily, but also a space as well. Uh, that's, yeah, you know, maybe there might be another player that's coming in because, yes, these two players uh, in terms of uh, Yakumakis and also Abram, those are two of the three that 
Uh, Gonzalo Pineda has alluded to that will be joining the squad hopefully soon. Uh, that third one will come in. But uh, also, uh, uh, you know, of course, Ellie and I too uh, are looking and now have uh, secured their head coach. And in terms of that, uh, Steve Cook, he's been named the head coach. He comes from... Uh, previously being the academy director for the Seattle Sounders, so Gareth, uh, or Garth Lagerway, he has brought him in, but uh, more than 30 years of coaching experience, and uh, yeah, he'll report to academy director Matt Lowry, and uh, he'll be joined by the uh, former academy U19 head coach Jose Silva as his assistant coach, but uh, yeah. Uh, LNA2, of course, will make their debut in the MLS Next Pro League. And, uh, yeah, the schedule will be announced at a later time. But, um, yeah, uh, Laurie, he, he mentioned that Steve's leadership and experience separated for him for this position. And we couldn't be more excited for him to lead LA United 2 in our next uh, season. But, um, yeah, he's uh, previously... Uh, yeah, been really almost everywhere, really. But uh, yeah, he's uh, an England native from Sheffield, and his coaching career in 1991 uh, at the Sheffield Wednesday Academy. And after six years, he moved to the United States to work with Sereno SC in Phoenix. Uh, and then in 2010, was hired by the Colorado Rapids to be the academy director. Uh, he also joined the first team as an assistant coach in 2012. And then uh, in 2017, he was named the interim head coach of the Rapids for the final 12 matches of that season. And uh, he was also named the head coach and technical director of OKC Energy uh, FC uh, in the USL Championship, where he was there for two years. Uh, and then uh, he was named the Phoenix Rising FC's director of soccer in 2019. And then he joined the Seattle Sounders in May of 2021 as the U-17 head coach. Um, and he also helped the Sounders uh, U-17s win the Generation Adidas Cup in April of 2022. So definitely somebody that uh, you know brings that pedigree across the uh, a lot of different levels and so uh yeah he'll be someone that can uh really groom and teach our young academy kids at la united too so uh yeah definitely a uh really really good signing i feel like for the head coach position for la united too so excited to see uh those uh, those fruits of that labor to come but uh a couple more bits of news, uh, apparently, uh, in terms of, uh, per the athletic, the uh, Southeast uh, makes a lot of sense for a new U.S. soccer training facility, and Atlanta apparently is in the running, so that will be interesting for the U.S. men's national team. And uh, the last bit of news is, unfortunately, King, the L.A. United pup, he is saying goodbye. He said, quote, uh, in jest, uh, on Twitter, Good news, friends. I'm off to formal training. I'm going to miss everybody in Atlanta so much, but I can't wait to keep learning with my buddies at America's Vet Dogs. So, uh, yes, best of luck to King. And, yes, it will be very interesting to see which kind of dog, which new dog will be brought in as the Atlanta United pup. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, good vibes uh, for, uh, you know, uh, the alien United pup anyway, every single time, uh, you know, he's either at the stadium or there's posts, right? But anyway, so that's it for the news and pretty much the entire episode, except for the question of the day. And the question of the day is, do you think Yorgos, uh, Yukamaki's, oh my God, uh, Yakumaki's, do you think Yorgos Yakumaki's is a good signing? Let us know in the comments below, yes or no. Looking forward to what you have to say. But guys, uh, yeah, we will have a lot of fun uh, pronouncing Yorgos Yakumakis' name all season and uh, maybe beyond. And so uh, we will see, uh, you know, how he goes on and gets on. But uh, guys, that is the episode there and there. Remember to like, share, comment, subscribe. 
I've been AJ. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next episode. Excellent.